Hello friends, I'm Janine and I'm going to give a new tutorial on how to use several features and there won't be any background music on this one so I'll try to remember that that can be hard for some people. All right, um, I have Psalm 139 on my screen and I'm using the Blue Letter Bible app. I'm using an Android, and so it's very similar with Apple, but some of the tools are in a few different places. So the Android people will be able to do exactly as I do. Now, you can probably see from the screen, I have my fonts pretty large. <clears throat> and I'm going to just go through how to do quite a few different things on this one. The first thing I'm going to show you is on the bottom right, you'll see two down arrows. If you tap that, your scriptures will scroll. If you tap it again, it will stop scrolling. On the bottom left, there's a cross with a speaker. If you tap that, it will bring up audio. <clears throat> and so if you, let me see here, if you click right here, this is where you can change where you're at. It doesn't necessarily match the verse you're on right now. So you do it down here. So we'll do 139. It's a wonderful psalm. And then over here, you have all these options. So you can listen to it in all these translations. <clears throat> so I'm just going to go ahead and do the New King James. But I do read a lot from the NASB. And I also look at the Amplified sometimes. And of course, you know I go into the Strong's quite a bit. Okay, now you can also control the speed at which it reads by hitting the plus to go faster or the minus to go slower. If you're wanting it to read a certain chapter over and over, you can hit repeat. If you want it to just read through the scriptures and not stop, you hit continuous. Okay? So I'm going to just hit play so you can hear it. Psalm 139, for the chief musician, a Psalm of David. Okay, so they put background music on, and I don't really know if I can get that taken off. I mean, it, I can't remove it. I'm wondering if they have another translation that doesn't do that. Let's just try this one. Chapter 139. Oh, Lord, you... Okay, so if you listen to it in the NASB... They don't have background music. So you can play with these translations uh, and see what each one sounds like and pick the one you like the best, okay? All right, now, in order to close this window, let's say I don't want to listen to it being read right now. You just... So all you do is tap on your screen where the Bible above it is, and it will disappear. <clears throat> okay, now, the um, at the bottom center, there's an up arrow, so let's say I'm scrolling, and even when it's scrolling, you can push it faster, and then I stop scrolling, and let's say, no, I need to go to the top again, this bottom center arrow will take you to the top. This left curved arrow will take you to the previous book you were reading. So I was in Luke yesterday. And then if I hit forward, it'll take me to where I'm at now. So that's kind of handy. All right. The next thing I'll show you real quick is at the top left, there are three bars. This is your menu. And if you go into here, you have all kinds of options. So... Um, 
Favorites has to do with scriptures you've saved and given them little titles. Okay. And I like to do that quite a bit. Then highlights is where you can edit your colors. But just know that if you move them around, it's going to change all your colors because the way it the way the software knows colors is not so much by what it looks like as it is the order in which you have these then by what it looks like so if you rearrange any it's going to change all the highlights you've done so far so just be aware of that it's better if you want more colors to just add them at the bottom or when you're very first getting started using highlights, then decide which colors you want and what order. Because once you start highlighting throughout, you, you'll find that if you're like me, you tend to have you tend to have a category that you use for different colors. For example, if I'm reading a scripture and it's it's about Almighty God and His characteristics. I will put it in purple. Okay? But if I'm just reading and it's something really important, I'll use one of these other colors. If I'm reading a scripture and it's about God's judgment or wrath, I'll use like these green colors. Like you're in trouble. <laughs> so that's just how I do it. But everyone has their um, everyone has their little way that it flags them. Now, what I just did was like I had just done a demonstration. So you tap on the verse you want to highlight, and I had selected a verse to show you. But if you want to do a block highlight, let me go somewhere else to show you that. Let's say I want to do eleven and twelve. You pick the color you want, and then you do this to include the selection, and it'll highlight that. And then let's say it's like, oh no, I don't want that highlighted. You can just say remove highlight, and it'll say, okay, from where? And if I can't remember what verses, well, this is telling me I was on 11, so I'm going to just go here, 11. And I'm going to go here to 12 on highlight. See? Okay, now let me show you how to change Bible translations. If you tap on the menu at the top and you go to My Bibles, the first thing is you will see a couple translations that they have in here automatically. And if you're like, well, I don't have all the ones Janine has. What you do is you, is you, um, let's see, I think if you tap up above, hmm, how did I add them? Oh, okay, yeah. See, I also have an apple, and so things are a little different on the apple. Okay, so what you do here is if you haven't, like here, the NASB 20, this is giving me an option to either download it or update it. So I'm going to go ahead and tap download the Bible. And you know why I like to do that? Because then if, if for any reason the power goes out and I don't have Wi-Fi, I can read this translation and I don't have to be connected. And it's a good translation. So I do like, they don't take that much space, so I like to download those. Look, I can also download the Amplified. So I'm going to do that. <clears throat> so that's how you do it in the Android. In the Apple, you'll see where you have to tap to add your Bibles. And then you go through the list and you say which ones you want. And then guess what? You can also reorder them. And I'll show you that next. So to reorder, you just grab these little dots in the center and move it up. Now, the Hebrew Names version, that is a nice version, and it, um, it reads very similar to the New King James, maybe a little similar to the ESV because those are close. 
But what it does is whenever there's a Hebrew name, both the names of God or Old Testament names, or even in the New Testament, if they're a Hebrew name, it will show you really what that word is in Hebrew in the English translation of the Hebrew names. So I'll give you a demonstration. Now, this over here, if you tap at the top, you've got primary and parallel. If you want two translations, here is where you pick the second one. I don't, I do this on my iPad, but I don't do it on my phone because I need the fonts big and it would, the words would be too compressed. But you can do that. And if your eyes are better than mine, <clears throat> I have several friends that do the parallel right on their phone. So I'll just show you what it looks like. So I have the new King James selected on the, under the primary tab. So if I want a second one, then I go to parallel and I tap that. And once I'm done with that, just hit at the top right, the little house, the home button, and see if my fonts were smaller, this is what we would see. Okay. And so, um, but if you're, you would see more, it's really nice if you can read the smaller fonts. So. Okay, so if you want the parallel off, then you then you go to parallel and you turn it off by unchecking or checking this box. See, unchecked. Now I'm just going to have this translation, but if I want to change translations, I can switch to this one as my main one and hit home. So now I'm going to read Psalm 139 in the NASB. Now something I want to point out is that both the NASB... And the New King James, and then some of the other translations as well. But these two are really good about it. They give you a lot of footnotes. And I would encourage you to tap on those. Because they will give you the literal word in the transliteration of the text. And sometimes they also give you like the Old Testament scripture that that is quoted from. So... Sheol, just in case you don't know, means hell. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go back to the New King James. The thing is, is <clears throat> I have a lot of scripture memorized in the New King James and even the King James. So I do read from these other translations, but my basic reading is in this just because I'm more familiar with the scriptures, but... What I've done is, anyone who, I, I'm not trying to promote a product, but I can't even tell you how, how grateful I am the Lord gave me an iPad, because, and I've done a lot of tutorials on the Blue Letter Bible on that, because it is so easy to use, and you can easily put two translations side by side with large fonts, and that's what I do, and I've actually learned a lot more doing that and I look at the footnotes and all the translations that I have on the screen and it is the best way to not only read the word but study the word so but for but if you don't have that option don't worry this app on your phone is the same app that I use on my iPad it's just that I can't fit two translations side by side with the big fonts okay now, you can go to history. This will show you scriptures you've looked up and even the dates. And now the search, I use this all the time. All the time. So, let me show you something. Okay, if you're just in the scriptures, let's say you want to go to a different book. If you tap on, so I have Psalm 139 at the top. If I tap on that, it will... Pull up the Old Testament. And then I can tap over here and look at the New Testament. And that gives me the ability to go wherever I want right away. Okay. And now I'm going to go back. And it's very similar in the iPad just or with the Apple product, just a tiny bit different. 
Now, this on the right is all, is an hourglass, or not an hourglass, it's like a magnifying glass. That's a search, that's a quick search feature. I use this probably every day, literally. It is, or almost every day, it's so awesome. Because I will remember a scripture, or I will remember a key point, and I want to look it up in context, and I want to refresh my memory of the whole verse, and even the verses surrounding it. So, here, let's say we want to look up, um, well, let's say we want to look up heaven. Now, I want you to know there's a lot of scriptures about heaven that don't even use the word heaven. So, if you use the Blue Letter Bible app on the desktop, they actually have a tool where you can study topics and if you were to put heaven in, they would probably help you find a lot of the scriptures that are about heaven that don't have the word heaven. But look at this. This is amazing. 501 verses with the word heaven in the New King James. Now, I will tell you, some of these are referring to the second heaven, which is... Uh, so, we have an atmosphere, so that's really the first heaven, that's... That's where here in Genesis 1-8, the firmament, that's like our atmosphere. The second heaven is above that, and it's a, it's a spiritual dimension where the fallen angels are, and that's where a lot of battles are fought. And the third heaven is where God's world is, and his throne is in, also in the third heaven. So when you're studying heaven... No, you have to differentiate. Is it, is it just referring to this firmament, which is our atmosphere? That's the first heaven. Is it referring to second heaven where there's warfare? And that's in Ephesians chapter 6. When we war not against flesh and blood, but powers and principalities and rulers, wicked rulers of darkness in the heavenlies. That's referring to the fallen angels in the second heaven. And then... The angels that fell with the evil one. And then there are scriptures referring to the third heaven. Now I can tell you there's a scripture in Corinthians where Jesus says, or not Corinthians, let me see here. Let me see where it is. This will be a great example. Um, and I know he uses the word imagine, so let's look up imagine. Oh, let me see it in the King James. See, this is the thing. When you're searching a scripture... Oftentimes, we know a verse according to a translation we read, but it may not come up in a search with the default translation. So I'm going to switch it to the King James because for years, that's what we listen to the scriptures in. And I'm going to go down. Yep, that's still not the right one. Okay. I know he says, I... Ha, or it's Paul I'm thinking of, has not seen. Let's try that. Let's now go to the New King James. There we go. This is the verse I'm looking for where Paul... Okay, when you see it in italics, know that that is a quote from the Old Testament. And if you hit the footnote, it says from Isaiah 64.4. Okay, so do you see how this just constantly reiterates the whole counsel of God is, is relevant and critical, not just the New Testament? Because Jesus quoted from the Old Testament, Paul quotes from the Old Testament, other writers of the New Testament quote from the Old Testament. So, so this is where the Lord, Paul is talking about, we have a heavenly glorious hope because of Jesus Christ and his redeeming power through his blood sacrifice for us. So, but it is written here, I'm in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9, but as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. So awesome. And then it says in verse 10, But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. 
For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. So, God has prepared things for us in heaven when we go home to be with Him because we're part of the family of God now. But He has all kinds of things for us, and the Holy Spirit does reveal them to us. Okay, but just make a note that this is from Isaiah. Now, if we want to go to Isaiah, we can tap right on that. And we can even say, I just want to see it real quick. And look, you can scroll that verse right here. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor per perceived by the ear, nor has the eye seen any God beside you who acts for the one who waits for him. And then when you're done, just hit close at the top. So just, you probably have already figured out, this literally is the most powerful Bible app there is. I have tried many, and unless you're going to have software that you download on your computer that's more complicated, not so much for your phone, maybe they have an app for your phone, but you'd probably have to pay quite a bit. This is the best. And... They do continuously add, I have noticed they've added a couple translations, like a couple years ago they added the Amplified. So, all right, now let me see if there's any other main features I should just show you real quick. Oh, <clears throat> okay. I don't want this to be too long, but I do want it to cover some important things. So if you go to down at the bottom settings, this is where you can do a backup. And I have it set on auto backup. And then it does a backup every so often. Highlights. Merge. Merge on will combine the highlights from the backup with the highlights on this device. That's nice. I think I'll turn that on. History will combine the history on the backup. That's nice. Favorites, yes. That's great. So I just turned all those on. And then just hit your back arrow at the bottom of your phone. Because they didn't have a back on the screen. So on your phone. Okay, so if you scroll down, you can see that it's under settings. You can adjust the line height to make it spread out more or closer together. You can adjust the font size. The reason why my fonts are way bigger than what this would look like is because on my phone I have them set bigger. So they're not nearly as big. I mean, this number, 1.53 on font size, is actually not as big as what my fonts really are because I have them bigger on my phone as well. So that affects all the software. And then I turn the red letter on. I have the verses numbers on. I like to know the verse I'm So this is how you can control these things. And at the very bottom is where you can control the Bible scroll speed to slow it down or speed it up. Okay, so you can play with that. All right, and when you're done, just hit the home and it'll take you back to your scripture. Now, I'll just mention a couple other things. Let's go here to verse 9. Um, if you tap on the verse and you scroll up, you have a whole other huge menu that's like an entire B Bible school library at your fingertips. You've got the Strong's Interlinear. You've got Translation Comparison, which is really awesome. I use this a lot on my iPad where my fonts are a little smaller but you can look at a verse and say well how does each of these translations how do they translate this scripture or even a portion of the scripture because different translations do have their different influences so that is really helpful I recommend doing that going to translation comparison also you can go to cross references now when you're looking at this, this is super helpful, but please keep in mind this is a very limited list that they give you. 
So if you're wanting to do a more in-depth study on, say, a key phrase or keyword, you're going to have to search that out yourself with this search feature. And if you want to search a phrase, not just a word, you want to put quotes around it. Whoops. Okay. So if I want this exact phrase, this is just an example, you have to put quotes around it. All right. But there's so many ways diff different verses are worded with the same meaning that anyway, they can get really involved. But your studies... I mean, you can do topical studies this way by searching a keyword or a key phrase. And then when you're reading the different verses, you will be able to weed out the ones that are not really relevant just because the words there, it's not in context as to what the topic you're looking at is. So that can be an involved study. Okay, now let me show you something else. If we go, so you've got text commentaries, you can look at Dr. Chuck Smith's, well not Dr., just Pastor Chuck Smith's text commentaries. And so when you tap on a verse, it's going to give you the, these pastor or doctor's text commentaries for the scriptures relevant to that as well as some others, but not necessarily everything. So different verses will pull up different commentary list okay the next thing is there's dictionaries and then at the top the interlinear now when you're in the old testament the original text was primarily there's a few verses in aramaic but most of it is hebrew the new testament was written in greek so the strong's number will either start with an h for the old testament words or a G meaning a New Testament word okay because it stands for Hebrew or Greek so since we're in the New Testament this will be a, a G and here's the thing it's going to give you the verse all right it's going to give you the English word and then the Strong's number goes with each of these word or phrases so hath not seen ear and then the english is always going to be in the in the king james when they put that there entered which hath prepared let's look up the word hath prepared so if you tap on g2090 just tap on it <clears throat> even though it's not highlighted you can tap on it and it will take you into the strong's word that, that was for that little and tap on this they will pronounce it for you Strong's G 2090 Hetoy Madzo Hetoy Madzo Okay so he's going to pronounce it in Greek for you if it was an Old Testament word he would pronounce it in Hebrew for you they give you the root words so if you don't get enough information from this this one you can go to the root word and get more information now, something unique about the Blue Letter Bible app, and I actually love it, is that they have created this outline of biblical usage. And what they do is they analyze the Strong's definition and other information about this particular word throughout the scriptures, and then they tell you in the scriptures... And in connection with the Strong's interlinear definition, this word means the following different options. And I love it because it's kind of like cut to the chase. It means to make ready or prepare. And then under that definition, it means to make the necessary preparations, get everything ready. Then it goes on to another type of meaning, draw from the oriental custom of sending on before kings on their journey persons to level the roads and make them passable also to prepare the minds of men and give the messiah a fit reception 
So that's kind of like John prepared the way for the Lord. But when God's preparing the way, he's making preparations in our eternal home with him for us, specifically for each one of us, because he's a personal God who loves us. Now, if you want to go down to the Strong's Inner Linear, then they'll give you these main words, prepare, make ready, provide. They tell you how many times throughout the scriptures it is. And then below, they give you the more in the definition. Then you've got the Thayer's Greek lexicon that gives you more information. Okay, so you can do a lengthy study that could take you 30 minutes to to an hour on one verse if you want to really dig into this they not only give you these definitions they then give you scriptures if you just keep scrolling down i don't want to make you dizzy but if you keep scrolling they literally give you scriptures here where that word prepare is used and you can just keep scrolling because they're going to list the scriptures you don't even have to go to them just start reading them you could spend an hour right here in this one section of the, of the inner linear. It is amazing. And I challenge you to find another app that does this without you spending a lot of money. And even if you spent a lot of money, I still don't know if they give you this. But God bless Dr. Chuck Missler. He did this. <clears throat> His ministry provides this. And they don't charge you if you want to donate to the ministry. I encourage you to do that if you use this, whatever God puts on your heart. But they don't put ads. They they trust the Lord. I, it's beautiful. Anyway, God's going to bless them so greatly in heaven for this. All right. So I think that is a good overview of the majority of the features. If you have questions on anything else, please feel free to make a comment. And I can make another video, but I'll just leave it here. So the Lord bless you and keep you safe. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye-bye.